as that like passes, there's a there's a, a couple of stories inside of that. So I owed a lot of money out to people, um, and people came for me. They done what they had to do, and I done what I had to do for them in order to to pay off my debts and, and and you know sort of right my wrong in in that world. You fast forward sixty five days or something like that. But first of all, I go home. Everyone knows everything about me. Newspaper, all of it, just just. You know, your reputation and family names tarnished. Like uh I'm from a good family, man. Like I've got I, I'm the I'm the I'm the odd one. You know, I'm the I'm the I'm the milkman, as some people like to say. Well, I think <laughs> if we're in Thailand this amount of time, I think we all are. Yeah, well exactly. Well I see this place as a place where nobody actually belongs back home and we sort of see it here and yeah. Um what happened then was ninety days later, I mean I look I assaulted the police officer on abroad. I was caught with a quantity of so many different substances. Even some of it was not legitimate, and I knew that as purpose. So they found everything, scales, the lot. It was bang to rights, you know. So I travelled over there. I, I I said goodbye to everyone, man. Uh, hugged me mom. I was tremoring and hugging me mom. I was saying, I'll see you two years. I'll see you, see you when the time spent. And I got on a one-way flight. Um, I flew over. I flew over to Amsterdam first. I smoked a bit of weed. I wanted to say goodbye. So I smoked the joint and went to Belgium and went to Belgium to, to be sentenced for what I thought was going to be the remainder of the time. And yeah, I went into that court. Still got the, the picture in me, the image now. And I thought I'm going to walk in that door. And I'm going to be in now for at least like 20 months was in my head, like the, the, the time spent or at least a year if I was going to do half the time in, 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 the, in their world. And, Long story short, that they gave me an opportunity because I'd shown remorse. I'd traveled over. I'd come back where, you know, I'd started to live life again. I was volunteering in a garage, a different garage, and they wrote a nice letter for me. And, yeah, I was very, very fortunate that day to be given a, suspend, a suspended sentence for the remainder of the time. And the judge literally said, basically, get out of Belgium and don't come back. If you're caught here with so much as, like, I want to use this, but, like, jaywalking, it's like, you will do that time, so I got I got out of there as quick as possible, of course. And zero time. Yeah, so I zero time. At the twenty one days spent, oh, they took their bail money. So they took eight thousand euro uh, ten thousand um ten thousand euro, eight thousand pounds. So exactly. And they took that. That was now part of the bill that I had to pay back to, to my family. I was very, very, very lucky that they were about. Um and from there I just start to build forward. So that was two thousand fifteen. Um, 2016, I literally sent a message to everybody. I woke up and I walked away from everything. Um, I partied a little bit before, but then I walked away. January 2016, I was like, I'm going to change my life. I'm going to do everything possible now to change my life and, and more so to change my mom's life and give her options of moving forward because for, tw say, since I could walk, so say for 20 years, I've put her through hell and... You know, I've put her through hell when, you know, already from a broken family, she was already working hard enough. So it was like from there, I had to make my my mission external to me. So it's not it's not no longer my, like me, my ego, I'm doing this for me, which, you know, a lot of things it, it is, but making it external made me work harder for, towards. So. so I put myself as an Uber taxi driver. I was one of the first Uber taxi drivers in Liverpool. I, I was aware of, of where it was at. I got a good, good percentage and... I started to focus on fitness and work forward. So that was 2016. And I was doing 40, 50 hours a week in a taxi and studying around that time. I competed six months later. I come in, in men's physique bodybuilding in London. And I came second out of 38. And I was like, oh, shit, I could do fucking well here. It's like, oh, like I, I was genuinely like surprised even still now i'm still surprised okay, so before we get into that i kind of want to backtrack more just what's going through your mind on those nights you're saying you're 23 three hours there you're not you know you're able to go outside you're kind of building up building up this energy and understanding your mind like are you building a plan during this time of when i get out of here this is what i'm gonna do this is what i'm gonna change and did you have kind of like steps and goals yeah so at first no until I got the chance of, like, it could be some bail. So at first, I was like, I'm doing this for two years, and I need to adapt to this, please. 
there was a point when I was in a little small holding cell, which is probably the size of your couch. You couldn't sit down in there. It was time your, your little chair. And there was a point, and I remember I was waiting to be to, to go in to see the judge, and I was like, if I get through this, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this amount of money legitimate through a way, and I didn't know what that way was. And within the next five to ten years, I will be living that same life again, what I thought at that time. Um I'd be living that same life again, but without any overheads, I'd like to say, without anyone coming after me. So there was so much uncertainty. Um, and then even with the bail and in the back of my mind, I got the the guy, I left this out. So the guy I punched was the chief drug inspector of Tomorrowland. Uh, it's it's a point that I've left out. Yeah, yeah, he turned up to court and he, you know, he, he basically said I attacked him. And on the first time, I couldn't defend myself. Um. But either way, I couldn't defend myself. I was bang to right. <laughs> it was. Well, yeah, was. then you're pretty lucky to, you know, be allowed to leave as well because they easily could crack down on that and then you're stuck there for 20 months. If you enjoyed this content, we're doing five clips like this a week. If you want to watch the full podcast, click here.